I was trying to be polite. I said less than optimal, maybe less than optimus is what I should have said. Phil kind of laid it out. What was your biggest takeaway from the quarter? Tesla needed an adult in the room, and Musk was the adult in the room on this conference call. The big thing, the, the most important thing is that they are not going just straight to autonomy. A Model 2, a sub-30K vehicle, will be out, and that's accelerated. And that's music to the ears of the street. You went in. It, investors were expecting a disaster and another comedy show conference call. Instead, you actually have a pilot on the plane navigating, and, and it's not Ted Stryker. Winston and Felix here, and Winston just said to me, Felix, you missed the opportunity to buy Tesla. It's over. It's going to keep going up to a vertical line. And he might have a point, but is he right? This is all advice from a golden retriever here. Don't know if you can see his little nose there at the bottom of the screen. And we've moved from headlines like this, Tesla downgraded once again to a 10% rally after hours on the earnings announcements. And the numbers were bad. So why is this stock going up? And is this party going to last? Should we just throw it all in and buy it now? Or is there going to be another dip? That's what I want to walk you through. And in fact, I've done one better. I've put together all my Tesla research for you in a document that you can download at felixfriends.org slash Tesla. It's completely free of charge. So you can get the max value out of this video here. So let me walk you through the actual earnings numbers. And then we look at why the stock is up and what it means and what mainstream media isn't really telling you because they tend to like hold things back from you. Now, what happened to my pen? Here it is. And so what have we got? We've got a 13% decline in, in, in vehicle sales, which is terrible, right? Regulatory credits are down 15%. Leasing's down 16%. Only services are up 25%. So this at the moment reads like a like an Apple earnings, you know? That's basically what their business looks like. Everything is flat or slow or declining, but service revenue is going up. And it continues revenue overall down 9%. Margins are down to 17% on gross margins. Um, operating margins are down. Net margins are down to just 5% now. And yeah, so what's positive about this? Why the heck would the stock go up with numbers like this, which are pretty appalling? Well. A, we were expecting it to be appalling if you watched my video yesterday, but then they uttered the words AI and NVIDIA, and that obviously does the magic. No, I'm just kidding. But they have added 40,000 H100 NVIDIA chips so far, and you can see the speed at which they are investing in that. So the AI training capacity has exploded. I mean, literally exploded since last quarter. And why do we care? Because if you believe in the future of this business, uh, this is the future. And it's going to leave every other automaker way, way, way behind. And here is what Daniel Ive said, that Tesla needed an adult in the room. Elon Musk was the adult in the room because there's going to be a renewed push for affordable models. So what the market really wanted was for Elon to say, I'll put out the $25,000 car, and that way you can sell a lot, and that way margins will improve because they will utilize the factories to the capacity, and that's how you improve margins. And he's done that. So he's kind of like backtracked a little bit on what we were hearing on the weekend, that it's all the push on robo-taxis, and it's now about affordable models. But it's more. Stick around. Tesla has released a preview of their ride-hailing app, which looks like a fairly basic Notion job, but it's a, it looks very nice regardless. And what does it remind you of? Uber, anybody? I'd say it arrives you of... It's basically Uber, right? And okay, you can, you can control the temperature and that kind of thing. So you'll be able to, from the app, control probably the music. I think you already did that, didn't they, with Spotify? And temperature and things like that, because it's obviously more connected. You know what the model's going to be. And also, yeah, play music and so on. And why are we excited about that? Because for this, we read, and we should use a blue pen for this, subscription revenue 
and recurring revenue. And the problem with a car company is you sell one car for thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars or whatever, and then that person goes away and it doesn't come back, and they might not buy another vehicle for like five years or ten years. So you don't really build that relationship. You you only get the one time hit right of payment. It's the leasing thing. It's basically the same thing. You have a leasing company that makes a bit of money, but essentially it's the same thing. Whereas with something like this, where you have customers who pay you. 50 bucks a month or something, you now have a predictable, projectable recurring income stream and you can use that money to grow. And analysts love it. Why do analysts love it? Because it's easier to model. Very hard for me to predict how often people are going to buy cars, whereas I can see exactly how often people book the sort of Uber type service and how much money you can make out of that. And I can model very easily what the company is therefore worth. So analysts like it. Tesla is also in conversations with a major automaker to license its FSD service. And that's sort of the, the holy grail again, that Tesla's FSD is so good, I think it is better than anything else out there, that other companies will just be like, we're not going to buy 40,000 or 100,000 GPUs and spend billions on this. We're just going to license what Tesla does because it's more efficient for us and we're just going to pay them a little bit of a subscription fee. So again, it's a recurring revenue. Now, we don't know if that deal's going to go three through. We don't know how major that automaker is but it's, a, it's an interesting thing. So it gives people hope, right? Elon's very good at that, at this sort of telling a story of this could all come to fruition. And it might, it might just. But look at this. This is a brilliant, brilliant chart here. And I have no idea who made this, if this was Tesla who made it or somebody else. And it shows you the, the ecosystem. So the old ecosystem is vehicles, charging, energy storage, solar, that's kind of all what we already know, right? Lithium refining, battery cells, services. To an extent, FSD, or that's really just coming to fruition now. But the right hail is brand shining new. AI compute is really rather new. The robots up here at the top are new. And that creates a whole nother ecosystem. And Elon said that the robots might start to work in Tesla factories at the end of 2025, which of course is super cool because as long as if Tesla actually uses them, they get better and they will hopefully outcompete Amazon's robots and, and so on, at least for more like engineering tasks. Maybe they won't be as good at packing boxes, but they'd be probably better at assembling things. So he is introducing here essentially a new startup. What's the challenge with that? That the old investors, and I'm talking probably here about institutions and pension funds and so on, who are in this vehicles, they just wanted to buy a self-driving car company. They might be a bit like, oh, this is all new and robots and AI. And we don't really understand it. This sounds scary. So they might leave. And new investors will come in and it'll take some time. I think there'll be some churn in the investor base. Now, has the stock moved more than we expected? Well, I told you yesterday that the stock is expected to move in this range, $136 to $190, which is quite a lot. And has it? Yeah, it's right in the middle of the expected move, actually. So the move is big, but it isn't like massive. Uh, so we might lose some of that gain because people might be a bit like, okay, Numbers were still pretty bad. Let's wait for the volume in the market actually opens up. Um, and I think there, there could be some more dip buying opportunities as just margins aren't brilliant. But what I would watch if you are thinking about maybe investing or getting into this, and this is Options Watch IO, by the way, I put the link down below as well. You can see what the smart money is doing, what the institutions are doing, the whales are doing every day, and what they're doing in dark pools, which are private exchanges. And you can see their trades. And from that, you can kind of tell what's momentum. And yesterday, the momentum was, was very much, um, actually, let me pop that in here. So we see the most recent ones. I'm just recording this as the market's closed. And we just look at the large trades here. And the momentum was cautious. People were buying put options. They were selling their calls. 
buying more put options. And, you know, we're talking here about the millions. Okay, selling a 310 put at 12 for $12 million, that's still a pretty cautious trade. So these are all fairly cautious trades and a lot of insurance buying here. So the market was still like, yeah, we are, we are, we're concerned. So what I would watch out for today, look at the end of the day at this data and see, was it enough to convince big institutions to put millions or dozens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars into these trades and see what they're actually up to? And that's called an edge. So get yourself a free one month subscription to optionswatch.io and I'm not selling this really. It's a platform we built. We take every single cent we get and we reinvest it into more cool features because we believe, Winston and me and my partner, that you deserve to have access to the same data that Wall Street has access to. So that's really why we do it. That's why we continue to do it and give you all the data points that you deserve to have. So very exciting. I'm happy, of course, for, for good earnings. I am just a little cautious that the story that he told translates because the numbers are bad. So he's going to have to back up the story with little tidbits of excitement. And he's very, very good at that. But just if you look at EV numbers being sold everywhere in the world, it's looking a bit bleak right now. So the question is, will the lower prices, will the cheaper models translate into that many more sales? And will that actually push up margins? I think that's the near term scenario. And then the longer term scenario is, yeah, brilliant. Full service, you know, FSD regulated. You're allowed to just sleep in your car while it drives or have nobody in it. And then you've got robo-taxi income and then you can take on Uber. Right. Brilliant. Love it. Uber stock, by the way, tanking. If you enjoyed the video, share it with somebody. Get yourself a free subscription to Options Watch.io for the month and get yourself an edge. Thanks for tuning in. Tesla investors are bracing for the worst results in seven years. The market is expecting a massive 13% move on the earnings out today. And I want to walk you through the data points here. We know already that Q1 deliveries were down like almost 9%.